probably the coolest thing about having a press pass is that all the food is free! It's not the coolest thing. <laughs> you, can, you can access every, everything everywhere with the press pass. You're ruining, you're, Just a bonus, yeah. you're ruining my excitement. Look, <laughs> I get free nachos and guacamole. What's more exciting than that? <laughs> Well, the exciting thing is that I found a competitor to my beloved Galaxy Note 2. This is the Optimus G Pro by LG. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a comparative overview between the Galaxy Note 2 and the Optimus G Pro, as I only had a limited time to spend with it, but let's go and check that out. Starting with the left-hand side of the device, you've got a mappable key, you've also got your volume rocker. On the back is a 13 megapixel camera and your flash and your speakers. On the front, you've got a 2 megapixel front-facing camera and your proximity sensor. On the top, you've got an IR blaster so that you can change channels on your TV, a headphone jack, and a microphone. On the bottom is just another microphone. On the right side of the device is just simply the power button. And turning it around to the other side, I will explain what exactly you can do with that mappable key. Now, contrary to where you have the notification LED on the Galaxy Note 2, which is the upper left corner of the phone, it's actually beneath the home button here. I find it really interesting and it gives it a little bit of a flair to it because since it's RGB, depending on the notification, it will change colors. And if you use something like the Lightflow app that you get from the Android market, you can control whatever color that you'd like because RGB makes every color that you can see. So it gives it something extra extra. Ooh, pretty unlock screen bubbly effect. Holding the Note 2 and the Optimus G Pro side by side, at first glance you would swear they're the same phone. There's only a couple things that are noticeably different like the home button being a thinner shape or a smaller shape on the G Pro and also when you're holding the G Pro in hand it feels a little bit less wide so it feels much more manageable. I'm noticing that holding the Galaxy Note 2 in my tiny little hands it's almost unbearable, but you can see it's just slightly less wide, so that bezel being smaller really helps. If you didn't like the size of the Note 2 in hand, I implore you, when the G Pro comes out, you gotta hold this and tell me if you feel any different. From a dimension standpoint, the Galaxy Note 2 is just a hair taller than the Optimus G Pro. As far as thickness, they're exactly the same. As for app similarities, on the Galaxy Note 2 you have something that's called multi-window view. That way you can put one app such as the map app and then you can drag something like the internet browser on top of it and it will put it either on the top or the bottom so you'll have like a split screen view. But on the Optimus G Pro you have something that's called Q-Slide. So if you touch one of the applicable apps, it will open and you can move it about the screen however you would like. And also, if you look, there is a slider bar for opacity. That's something that's not on the Galaxy Note 2 and you can make it nearly invisible so you can see through exactly what you're looking at. That becomes especially useful if you resize the Q-slide window and need to see what's happening beneath in the original app. The Note 2 does have a pop-up window execution, so you can make the browser pop-up and you can be on the internet and you can move it all about if you'd like, you can resize it. You can also open up a Note application and you can be writing in that and you can resize that. And then also you can be watching a video at the same time and make that a window and you can resize that window as well and move it all about. But I like the execution of QSlide better. If only it supported more than just a short list of apps, it might be an actual win. Now, returning to that extra button that you had on the side, it's called a Q button, and you can create a shortcut. So in this case, I am choosing the camera as a shortcut. So even though this doesn't have a dedicated camera key, I can now press on this mapped key, and voila, it opens up the camera, and I can take pictures from there or execute a video. So that's a definite win. 
getting into dual recording at this current moment only the galaxy s4 offers dual recording but samsung is promising a premium suite update so the galaxy note 2 will also be able to have dual recording basically you can use a little window that's used from the front facing camera so you can see yourself and then you can use a window from the back facing camera and you can see everything that's going on and you can also resize it and you can move it about as you would like the Optimus G Pro offers pretty much the exact same thing, except for I didn't see an option where you could mess around and change it into a cute little heart or anything like that. But you can also resize the window and you can also change the front facing camera window to being your big image rather than the small image so you can invert that. So both of them seem to be similar and function exactly the same. As for camera modes, the Optimus G Pro had all the same goodies as the Galaxy Note 2 normal mode, HDR, panorama, burst shot, beauty shot. The one thing that actually caught my attention is VR panorama. It's LG's own version of Photosphere. The Nexus 4 is also LG's phone. And it's actually a Google phone, so it has Photosphere. So LG took it a step further on their own line and said, hey, let's put in a Photosphere camera. So it's similar to Photosphere. It takes a 360 degree panoramic picture. I wish I had a chance to try it out, but hey, if that's a setting that you want your phone to have natively, there you go. Not sure what the relevance will be when Google allows all 4.2 Android phones to have Photosphere, but if you want to be first and not have a Nexus, there you go as well. Also, just like the Galaxy Note 2, you have an option for one-handedness for the keyboard. If you hit that arrow, it will go either right or left-handed, and you also have the option to turn it off just to being a full keyboard. So a lot of features just like the Note 2. It's got that exact same scrolling quick menu bar at the top. Instead of S Note and all its pen features, because this phone doesn't have a stylus, maybe some people will be happy about that. What you do have is Q Memo, and what it lets you do is write on the screen or erase on the screen looking at the exact image that you are looking at right now. So just say that you want to overlay some type of a note on your home screen or overlay a note or annotation on a web page, you're free to do that. When in a crunch, I find this brilliant for quick input. You can also save it to gallery as just a picture or you can put it in notepad and edit it. Don't worry, LG didn't copy everything. They kept some of their individuality by simply switching around the menu button and the back button. So on the Optimus G Pro, you can see that the back button is on the left hand side and the menu button is on the right hand side. But if you look at the Note 2, the menu button is on the left hand side and the back key is on the right hand side. Groundbreaking. Next, we're looking at the difference between the pixel densities. The Galaxy Note 2 is Super AMOLED HD 720p, and it's not of a pentile arrangement, but then you look at the Optimus G Pro, it's sRGB stripe pattern, and it's 1080p. Check that out. Oh my goodness, what a difference. It is incredibly sharp. Very big screen, 5.5 inches, same as the Galaxy Note 2, but it's got such higher resolution. The Galaxy Note 2 has a Super AMOLED panel, while the one that's on the Optimus G Pro is IPS Plus, and it is very good in terms of viewing angles, but so is it also on the Galaxy Note 2, so I would say that they're pretty much matched in that department. Both displays are able to show a full range of color. Of course, the AMOLED panel is going to be more saturated, oversaturated actually, and a lot of people don't like that. So what's nice about the Optimus G Pro is that you are offered a near full sRGB gamut. So yes, colors should be at least natural. The downside of this display is that the color temperature is very, very, very blue. It's so high on the blue side. It was very easily noticeable, especially anything that is white. So if you're somebody who's sensitive to panels that look too cool, that's probably a good way to represent what I've been seeing here. I don't know why they've done this, but it's quite noticeable. I loved that I found the display to be quite sensitive, had no trouble even recognizing my fingernails. The Note 2 really wasn't able to do the same thing, where you can see the Optimus G Pro has no issue. So yes, the display is very sensitive, but it is not sensitive enough to recognize something like through your shirt or with a glove. 
Even though this was a prototype model, it was still comparatively very smooth with not horrible latency going back and forth on either display. Both very fast, very, very snappy. It better be with the 1.7 gigahertz Snapdragon 600 processor underneath its hood. Magnificently, they've made the back cover removable, and underneath that back cover is an SD card slot. Yay! It's got a 3,140 milliamp hour battery, 40 milliamp hours larger than what's in the Galaxy Note 2. So with the Snapdragon 600 processor, I'm fairly confident that you're going to get pretty decent battery life. This phone defaults at 32 gigabytes of storage up from the 16 gigabytes on the Galaxy Note 2. That's actually really nice because not all the 16 gigabytes of storage is available for you. Some of it goes to the phone, so you end up having about 11 gigabytes of storage, whereas on this guy, you've got 23.30 gigabytes, so that's quite nice. I am concerned that this device displays what seems to be some throttling issues. When you turn up the brightness all the way, if the phone is too hot, it says unable to brighten more due to temperature increase. Eh, that is not good considering the device that's right there was even dimmer. So as it's getting hotter, it's losing its ability to have its full brightness. You do have to consider though that these devices have been played with all day long. In the benchmark realm, the Optimus G Pro pretty much fries the Galaxy Note 2. The Galaxy Note 2 has the Exynos quad-core processor that's clocked at 1.6 GHz and also has a Mali 400 GPU. The Optimus G Pro with the Snapdragon 600 processor that's clocked at 1.7 GHz with an Adreno 320 GPU just kicks the poor Galaxy Note 2's butt. It does about twice as good. This is a pathetic score. I don't know what happened here, but usually it's getting in about 12,000 or so, where the Galaxy Note 2 is only getting about six to 7,000. I want to see how the Optimus G Pro performs in the real world with games and such, because for some reason on GL Benchmark, it's only getting about 27 frames per second on screen and off screen during Egypt HD. When I was in New York, I had a chance to play with the Galaxy S4. It was the Snapdragon 600 version, also with an Adreno 320 GPU. And I had gotten 36 frames per second on screen for Egypt HD and 41 frames per second off screen. Still a 1080p display, so I don't know what's going on with you, Optimus G Pro. Even with only 27 frames per second for GL Bench, the poor Galaxy Note 2 is only getting about 13 frames per second, so still massive butt kicking. But again, everything matters in the real world, and when I'm playing games that are from the Android market on the Galaxy Note 2, everything plays just fine, and I expect just the same from this guy, if just a little bit smoother. So by the end, you're probably hoping that I'm going to say, which one wins? Well, unfortunately, I don't really believe in which one wins and which is better. I care more about how the phone is for you. What specs do you need? What do you need in daily life? For me, I don't feel like giving in my Galaxy Note 2 and having an affair with another phone that looks very, very similar. I'm still happy with my Galaxy Note 2. But if you're somebody who didn't get the Galaxy Note 2 and maybe you're taking a second pass looking at getting the Galaxy Note 2, you might also consider the Optimus G Pro. It's a fantastic phone as well. So some reasons to go with the Galaxy Note 2 or to stay with your Galaxy Note 2 is the AMOLED display. Even though it's not 1080p, it's still a super rich, oversaturated, which a lot of people like, AMOLED display with a very good contrast ratio. That means that blacks are actually black. Essentially, all the pixels are off to make black, so blacks just look absolutely amazing. The Galaxy Note 2 also has the S Pen. That's one thing that I don't understand why LG left out the stylus, but it's definitely got the S Pen and it's a Wacom stylus, so you've got many points of pressure, so it's almost like drawing on paper. So if you need a phablet, I hate that word, if you need a phone tablet that has a pen with it that's integrated with Wacom, definitely go with the Galaxy Note 2. Reasons for the G Pro, if you absolutely must have a 1080p display, 
There you go. And also what's nice about LCD is that it's more of a mature technology. So you're not going to get the blue pixel burn in that you will with an AMOLED display. So if you're a heavy texture and you have static images on your screen for hours a day, go with the LCD version. Go with the Optimus G Pro for that reason. If you need to have the latest and greatest, most powerful processors, then go with the G Pro. The thing is that the Galaxy Note 2 is still very powerful and can run anything that I've ever been able to throw at it. If you want something that looks like a dedicated camera key with the mappable button, then go with the G Pro. Also, if you want to be able to control your TV with an IR blaster, then go with the G Pro as well. So yes, it has a lot of new bells and whistles and a 13 megapixel camera, which is always debatable because with the 8 megapixel camera on the Galaxy Note 2, I wouldn't be inclined to jump up to 13 megapixels just because, oh, it has more megapixels. In the long run, that really means nothing. So I hope I've given you a lot to consider. This has been Erica the Technology Nerd, who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on all my social realms by getting to my main YouTube channel page. You can follow me on Twitter. You can be my friend on Facebook. And you can also follow me on Google+. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night.